at an individual level, at a corporation level. I know companies want to talk about it, but you know they'll do it on that one single day by sending one emailer, and it's it's still it's not a word that they're very comfortable with, as they haven't been in the case of menstruation either. But I think one of the things that makes this audience here and the panel here very very empowering is that we are speaking up, we are saying the terms they need to be called, and we're normalizing it. So from a conversation starter point of view, where does a corporation begin and how does a work environment change? So Shelly, before I get to the answer to your question, just a quick update. So AVID, so we are one of the women leaders, I mean the therapy of uh, women's health, so we are leaders, and we are committed to empowering women live healthy, take control of their own health, and we ensure and strive seamlessly to support them at every stage of their lives. So starting from a menarche to a menopause. So coming to menopause, so Shelly, I would like to tell you that there was a large scale robust survey which was conducted by Abbott. Okay, so this survey was basically to understand the local experience, the quality of life impacting the women in the menopausal space, Okay, and what do the caregivers feel about these women? So on this survey, there is one stat which I would like to tell you. So 73% of women, when I say women, these are the working women in the menopausal age group. They feel the need to take leave from work because of the menopausal symptoms. So this is India. But when I have to talk on the global front, so there is a study which was done in the United Kingdoms. So this was also a study done in the working population by the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development. Even that study stated a 63% increase in the stress level in the menopausal age group women because of these symptoms. So in all, the working women, as you rightly mentioned, so these women are in that stage of the career where they are actually doing amazingly well. They are leaders in the industry, they are assets to the organization. These leaders make a difference to the lives of the people they are working alongside. So it's our moral duty to support these women. So when you talk about Abbott, so we do our bit. Firstly, we do tie up with healthcare professionals and societies to make women menopause aware. They're supposed to know what they're supposed to expect when they transition into the stage of life. We've launched the next chapter so that there are more authentic stories to relate to and they can have more transparent and open conversation. And Shelly, as Lara had mentioned, there's something coming up very soon in the next few minutes for the audience out here and a very interesting tool which will also help these working women live life better and live life to the fullest. So, you know, one of the things that we shouldn't forget is at the time that women get their menopause symptoms in the working environment, they're actually no longer workers, they're leaders. Absolutely. And they literally are at the place where they could not just drive some change. They could make the men uncomfortable. And why do I use the word uncomfortable? Because it takes time for them to get used to understanding what are the various things that uh, you know women go through at the workplace and how much of the workplace goes back with them, which is another big part of their stress that you talked about. So let's talk about stress. I think you kind of talked about the film industry and the entertainment industry. Other than somebody mentioning Bombay Begums and hopefully there'll be more stuff coming up, we don't like talking about these things, right? I mean, women's health. Doc you only go to doctors for good news. <laughs> Pretty much it. Just curious what your experience is and if you are sensing change. Uh, while, uh, okay, the laughter gives it away. <laughs> See, let's, let's, let's break it down. I mean, it's wonderful, of course, and it's very, very important to talk about statistics, and it's very, very important to talk about the very technical aspects, the medical aspects of um, menopause. But I think the one thing that we can all relate to is personal stories, right? Personal experiences. That's what makes it palatable. That's what makes it say, oh, that happened to me. I get that. So for me, Shelley, I mean, I've been in an industry, everybody knows, is very, very male driven. I mean, we're fighting many things on many levels and some wonderful women that have come before me have paved the path, made it easier for me. I continue to do the same for women that will come after me. So, you know, I mean, we've, we won't bring them up here, but there are many things, pay parity, misogyny, inclusion, blah, blah, blah. 
one of the things that I've faced in my workspace itself is male colleagues telling me years ago, um, what is wrong with you? Are you on your period or what? Really? <laughs> and I can promise you, I cannot be the only woman who's experienced that. I mean, we face it in every industry, regardless of where we're at, you know. That why are you being so crabby today? What's gotten into you? Are you on your period? Yeah, maybe I am, you know. But so what? It doesn't change me from the way that I am on any other day. Excuse me. <laughs> That's signing up for inhabiting this planet with the opposite sex called women, you know. But... Um, Again, to put it into context, let me um, describe, so the man that I'm married to, wonderful man, Mr. Mahesh Bhupati, is a sports person, right? He's been taught since childhood to grind through the pain. I mean, the man is a wall, literally. You can hit him with a grand slam win, you can hit him with a loss at the final, you can hit him with a first round loss. The expression and the whatever is exactly the same because that's how he's been reared. Grind through the pain. Now for a man like that to understand why the woman in his life has suddenly gone off the rails one day, I mean for him he hasn't been raised in the manner to understand that there needs to be empathy or there needs to be understanding or there needs to be sensitivity and then divine justice the man has had a wonderful baby girl. You know, so now he's got his mom, he's got his sister, who is his only sibling, he's got his wife, and then he's got his daughter. And I have to say, commendable, you know, just it's amazing how much all we women in his life have rallied around turning this man who's been raised in a very specific way to be a certain, you know, kind of person to thrive in his industry, to be sensitive to what a woman around him is going through. So today in our family, these conversations are very normal. I mean, I can't, sometimes there are days I can't remember why I've walked into the room or, you know, and I know what I want to go and tell him, but then by the time I've gone in there, it's just gone. You know, it's brain fog. So we, we, the conversation in the house is very normal. I'm like, okay, please remind me again, what is it that I wanted to do? Because I seem to be, you know, my menopausal brain has sort of kicked in or pre-menopause, whatever you want to call it. But the fact of the matter is that we talk about these things very normally in the house. You know, if I am genuinely feeling something, unfortunately for my husband, I'm a very expressive person. And I find great relief in just telling somebody what I'm going through. <laughs> you know, so it's laid out on him. So I just want to tell women as well that don't feel, don't feel guarded or don't feel scared or don't feel, you know, held back in any which way that I can't say this to my spouse, or my partner, or my father, or my son, or my colleague. I promise you, they can handle it. Every single man on this planet will find a way to handle it. And that shouldn't be the reason for you to hold back. And because I think you are already handling it anyway, right? So why can't the others do? You Sorry. want to finish that? No, no, yeah. I'm going to, it's, it's going to get really long, so I'm going to pass it over. <laughs> okay, good. All right. But, you know, one thing that um, that sort of drives this whole idea of why we even come down to having these conversations is to the point that Lara made about the daughter came around, right? Essentially, that means we need to start young. And I think that's my perfect segue to ask Dr. Pandit about how she is trying to change this narrative at a fairly early stage so that young people know that this is something that will come at them, they're better prepared, and most importantly, they will reach out to experts for advice. Right. Thanks, Shelley, again. Uh, you know, we, I mean, when I was president of our federation, Foxy, uh, I had this concept of youth melas, and youth melas was basically for empowering young boys and girls between the age groups of 15 to 20, or 14 to 20, and we were talking to them about reproductive health and you know, how do you promote the concept of wellness and exercise and nutrition. And we had one session on how do you make your bones stronger? How do you build up the bone mineral density of the bones? So we used to tell them, well, you know, at the age of 25, you have the maximum peak bone mass. So, you know, eat well, have lots of, you know, milk, calcium, exercise. Expose yourself to the sun so that you get your vitamin D and your bones will be strong because it's your reserve for the future. And remember, 
Today we are the youngest population in the world, but two decades down the line we are going to be the oldest population. So we are going to have a lot of men and women above the age of 45, 50 and then going on to the geriatric side. So you have to learn to take care of yourselves right from now, build a healthy future and be sensitive to what the older people in the house are going through, particularly your mothers. And believe me, I had a woman who came into my OPD and she was 51. She had just had her menopause and she was having CVO problems. Her daughter-in-law brought her and she said, you know, doc, I have three sons. My older son is married and it was my daughter-in-law who heard me out. She saw me getting those hot flushes, night sweats, irritability, tiredness and she brought me and I'm so glad that the younger people now are aware. And naturally, you know, if the mother takes care of her daughter at her minar, when she starts her periods, making sure she's comfortable, the daughter should also do a favor in return. And not just to her mother, but to her mother-in-law, but to anyone at work. So I think, you know, that's what we taught them at the Youth Melas, to be sensitive towards the needs of the growing body. You want a good adolescence, you want a good reproductive period, but you also want a healthy perimenopause and a postmenopausal period. And through our associations, you know, we have the Indian Menopause Society, you have uh, Foxy, and you have so many other organizations who work together with NGOs to have, you know, uh, it's like uh, having small little workshops where you are encouraging doctors, general practitioners, and even young gynecology students to be sensitive to this particular issue. Don't just talk about surgery. It's also creating awareness. You know, it requires a little bit of hand-holding skills to understand that this woman is having a problem and what can we do and I think because everybody gets together and you know with the farmers, some of the farmers are doing really excellent philanthropic work like Abbott, getting together to cater to the women's needs so more and more women can <clears throat> freely discuss this issue and come forward for help. My only advice is again women should not keep things to themselves. My, I have been telling women you know give yourself a birthday present and what's the birthday present it's not a dress or it's not a ring a health checkup which tells you that you are well it's not just the blood but it's also the breast examination you know the pelvic ultrasound preventive measures and talk to the doctor about your problems and let them